Welcome to Edify Academy Learning Center. Today we are here with another topic called Renewable and Non-Renewable Resources. I, Engineer Mrinal Mitra, on behalf of Edify Academy is going to give the lecture on the basics of Renewable and Non-Renewable Resources. Let's see. The first term is what is energy? We all know that we have studied these things from the schooling uh, to the uh, end of our life. We Every time we used to find out what is energy and how it is created, can it be created or not. So it can neither be created nor be destroyed because we cannot create energy. We can only convert energy. That's why the energy is the ability to do work. Whatever work we are doing, the energy is required for completing that work or it is the capacity for vigorous activity. Let us see what are the types of energies. There are different types of energies, but uh, we'll be discussing few of them. Majorly, we'll be covering all the parts of energies like mechanical energy, electrical energy, chemical energy, nuclear energy, electromagnetic energy, thermal energy, sound energy, and radiant energy. Most of the energies are the types of energies we have discussed up till now. Uh, let's see. What is the natural resource or what are natural resources? All of the Earth's organisms, like whatever is present in, uh, inside and outside or inside the atmosphere of the Earth, all of the Earth's organization like air, water and soil as well as materials which is inside the Earth such as oil, coal and ore that are removed from the ground that is considered as the natural resources. The resources which are present naturally on the surface, inside the surface or above the surface of the earth. We separate these into two broad categories. First is renewable resources and other is non-renewable resources. What is What are renewable resources? So renewable, we can understand from the word itself, renew. It can be renewed. The resources which can be renewed. It is a long lasting resources. Are the resources are any resource that cycles or can be replaced within a human lifespan. If I take the human lifespan as a 60, nowadays it can be 60 to 70 years, probably in the past it was around 100 years, uh, then we can consider these type of resources which can be replaced or which can be recycled. Okay, examples include water, crop, wind, soil, sunlight, animals, etc. We can see where it, it is used. Windmills, HEP, hydroelectric power, wood, as a biomass wave for the MHD and different forms of devices and solar energy for the photovoltaic cell. Next is they that can be harvested or raised indefinitely unless they are they use exceed uh, unless the use exceeds the rate they can be replaced. So it all depends upon the demand and supply. Otherwise, we can harvest and we can raise it indefinitely, like the solar rays, solar energy, like water like wind energy etc food and power fiber are one of the uh, aspects where they can be raised and harvested indefinitely however nowadays we are in a position where food and fiber uh, especially food is in a very alarming situation because most of the persons are not uh, concentrated on farming or uh, growing foods. They are more concentrated in selling the land and converting their land into money and afterwards um, becoming entrepreneurs or uh, becoming a businessman. But um, it is a, in a very alarming situation that food is in a danger. So these are some pics of the foods. Okay. Next is soil. This is again a renewable source of energy. A mixture of living organism and dirt is called soil. Okay. Even though it is initially take take thousands of years to form, the rate at which the soil can regenerate depends on the climate of the area. Um, it is very obvious that uh, if the area is hilly area, then we have rocks. If the area is very marshy area, then the soil texture changes. That's why we categorize as sand, silt, and clay. These are the few pics which depicts how the animals, how the natural habitats are there in this natural resources. We can see logs, fishes, animals, soils. Next is wind energy. 
wind is caused by the uneven heating of the earth and it is uh, only renewable but it is inexhaustible okay next is sun or solar energy light from the sun supports all the life on earth as we know it also considered inexhaustible why we, we every time we are telling it inexhaustible because it is a categorized as uh, renewable energy resources however at least for the next 5 billion years because it also has a life next is water water is constantly renewed replenished by the water cycle again if we imbalance if we create an imbalance again it will affect the generation of water however fresh water sources are somewhat limited which i was discussing and i was saying previously even though we have uh, the whole earth is around 70-75 percent water but drinking water is not a very unlimited type of thing so we have to save water every time the use and quality of the water must be carefully monitored to ensure future use these are the few pictures which depicts windmill water sea water next is biomass biomass fuels are which is an organic matter like wood plant animal residue etc that contains stored solar energy and uh, we convert that particular organic compounds into biomass fuels it is used to supply energy to 15 percent of the world supply next is geothermal the heat energy inside the earth surface that is called geothermal the heat generated deep within the earth is called geothermal energy it is fueled by the decay of radioactive elements used to heat water these are the types of biomasses this we can see on the right side picture we can see the fissures the gas which is coming out it is a heat these are again the heat of the earth in form of lava of the volcano next is non renewable resources the resources which are mostly used it is non renewable so somewhat it is cannot be renewed any sources that cannot be replaced during the time of the human lifespan it is very important human lifespan around 100 years it took millions of years to form and exist in the fixed amount of in earth they need to be conserved before they become depleted that's why every time we used to say the conservation of energy is very important like the ores mineral deposits from which valuable metals and non-metals can be recovered for the profit metal ores or metallic ores like gold silver copper aluminium zinc etc next is non-metallic ores include salt sand gravel clay diamond gemstones etc these are the few pictures of different ores different salt different rocky substances next is fossil fuels again it is a non-renewable because they take billions of years to form in developing countries fossilized fuels charcoal fossilized wood and peat lignite bituminous these are different types of fossil fuels in developed countries coals natural gases and oils these are again the pics we can see the uh, types of non-metallic ores coal the remainings of wheatland plants that have been compressed over million of years this is very important over million of years it doesn't took few years few hundred years it took millions of years next are the different types of coals are peat that is 50 percent carbon the rest is water and contaminants next is lignite that is called brown coal it is 70 percent carbon as soon as we are moving ahead the carbon content increases that's why the quality of the coal also increases bituminous is called the soft coal about 85 percent carbon and anthracite it is called a hard coal greatly than 90 percent carbon cleanest burning and less ab abundant why cleanest burning because it contains less quantity of water and more quantity of carbon that's why it combusts very easily next is petroleum and natural gases are the remains of the mainly marine organisms so petroleum and natural gases are uh, we are very readily available in the ocean spirit why because it is those are the remains of the marine organisms 
typically found in underground formations called traps with the natural gases trapped on top and oil of the bottom. This is an oil plant machine. We can see that how the oils and natural gases are extracted on the ocean bed. This is burning gas that is called methane CH4. And these are the enslin traps where the oils are extracted. This is the global energy use in production. Global energy consumption the fraction 2017. All fuels around coal is 27%. Most of this is oil 34.2%. Next comes coal 27.6%. Natural gas 23.4% and then renewable 10.4 and nuclear 4.4 percent out of this renewables resources because we have more considered on it uh, we, uh, we use as 65.4 percent is used as a hydroelectric power HEP it can be a nano hydroelectric power or small or mega it depends upon our uses uh, next is 18 percent wind energy 9.4 percent biomass and 7.1 percent solar nowadays we are moving ahead in solar content because we are more concentrated on PV cells usage leads to using more fossil fuels accelerated the global warming trend due to more greenhouse emission and pollutions because we are uh, we are increasing the pollution levels by our uses that's why these renewable resources came comes into existence and what are the effects will a growth in the global energy use produce the global warming is the one of the biggest effect carbon footprint alternative energy resources there are energy resources that are more renewable or more environmentally friendly in comparison to fossil fuels however the efficiency are less currently include the following solar wind geothermal hydropower nuclear and biomass solar energy it can be used to heat buildings and water and provide electricity passive solar heating can be used for uh, the room heating and uh, facing windows that collect the sun's energy. We can see that this is a type of a structure where uh, window panes are fiber or glass which holds the energy, solar energy inside the room. Solar cells which converts the solar energy into electricity for residential use. However, the efficiency is very less, it is around 23%. Wind energy turns giant wind turbines that produce electricity. Every time we are converting the wind, uh, one form of energy into the another form of energy. Here also we are converting the wind energy into, which is around four to seven, around 21 kilometers per hour. If the wind moves, then effectively it gives some electricity. Uh, this is one of the most used hydropower electricity, where the turbine is turned, the water falls from the dam and around 1500 rpm the electricity produces this is nuclear power plant where nuclear fusion fusion occurs and after that after the bombardment the electricity is produced then nuclear energy is converted into electricity the last is very alarming and very important so we have around four different fuels First is wood, it is around 1 million years ago and old. Second is, second fuel is oil, late 19th centuries and 100 years old. Third fuel came into existence when these start depleting. Green sources like solar and wind, which is 20 years old, and nuclear, which is 50 years old. But uh, from my point of view, there is again a fifth fuel that is called the energy efficiency because saving is equal to generation. If I, if we all together save energy while moving out of the room we should, we should switch off the lights uh, while water is of no use then we should uh, close the tap and by saving small amount of energies it is equal to generation so this is the fifth fuel that is energy efficiency thank you like share and subscribe for more updates I have a channel. This channel is on the YouTube Edify Academy Learning Center website Edify Academy Learning Center dot business site. It is on Google business site and FB page that is www.facebook.com slash Edify Academy. Thank you. Thanks for watching.